Hey Threadheads, Darren here. Welcome back to another fly tying tutorial. Today we're going to be tying up a glam rocker. This is a pattern by a tyer named John Newbury. And he's got uh, this pattern, the uh, glam rocker, as well as some variations of it. He's got this one, this particular pattern in a few different color combinations. This is sort of a, uh, a gold and olive color variation that we're going to be tying here. I suggest you check out his site for some of the uh, other variations and some of the other really cool fly patterns that he ties. You can check that out at NewburyAnglingArts.com and I'll add a link down in the description. You can check that out. And I would also suggest that you try a few of your own color variations with uh, some of the different colors of UTC wire that you can get. You can probably come up with a lot of interesting combinations. Now the pattern is fairly straightforward but there are a few little tricks that I'll try and impart as we tie along. Don't forget to leave a comment down below and I'll get your name entered into the next draw that I do for some flies, stickers, fly tying materials, and some other goodies. Let's have a look at the material list and get started. Alright, so let's get started. We're going to get a fresh hook into the vise. Today we're going to be tying with a Firehole 516, size 12, and a 3.5 millimeter silver tungsten slotted bead. So we just put that on. Make sure that that bead's going to tip up. We're going to be using some 70D olive UTC thread. We're going to start by tying on right in behind the bead. We're going to put on a base layer of thread just on the flat part of the hook shank. We don't want to go around that bend at all. And then we'll wind back up behind the bead. And what I want to start doing here is I want to start building a bit of a taper right behind the bead. And uh, the goal here is to kind of make that bead stationary. So as we add a few wraps, you can kind of see how the bead stops jiggling around there. And that's kind of what we want. And as we're doing that, we'll build in a little bit of taper. We're going to tie in a tail. We're going to be using some dark uh, Coq de Leon in the dark pardo. And this is from a uh, whiting tailing pack. It's a fairly inexpensive way to get a lot of nice hackles for uh, your nymphs. And it's got some nice speckling on there. So I measured that out about a hook length and we'll tie that on. I like to put it right on top of the hook shank and just kind of Make sure that it uh, stays right on the spine of that hook. We'll take that almost all the way to the back and trim off the butt ends. Now one more thing I want to do is just add a, another wrap of thread underneath that tail just so that it's not going to inadvertently wrap down around the bend of the hook. So I kind of switch hands, put the thread over around the hook shank and then I just slowly bring that up and just kind of wedge it in under that tail. You don't want it wedged too hard because it will make that tail flare up a little bit. So we're going to be using two colors. I've got a coated gold olive UTC and a metallic gold UTC. I would suggest maybe using either both metallics or both uh, coated wires as you'll see here, these have a little bit uh, different diameter and that can make a bit of a difference. We're gonna put those together and I like to just stick them inside of the slot. And then as I wrap down, I'm just gonna pull them to the side a little bit, make it easier to work with. For sizes 12 down to 16, we're gonna be working with the brassy sized wire. And if we're going to go smaller than that into an 18 or 20, it's suggested we go into a, a size small UTC wire. And that was suggested by John. Uh, one of the things he told me is he likes to try and keep the segments to somewhere around uh, seven to eight wraps of both wires. So we're going to take both wires at the same time. And we're going to pull those down. We want to try and get that as close to the uh, 
end of the fly as possible. And then we're going to start wrapping forward. Now this can be a little bit tricky. And what I tend to do is kind of wrap backwards a little bit just so that the uh, wires kind of slip over the last wrap. And you can use your thumb just to kind of push those together. If you do have some gaps in there, the dark colored thread underneath, it gives it just a little bit different segmentation. And I think that looks all right as well. So we've got a little bit more than uh, seven or eight, but this is a bigger size. Um, so we're just gonna tie that off in behind the bead. And I like to put a couple wraps over the wire and then on the back side of it, back to the front and keep doing that to, just to make sure that it's really locked in place. And when you're satisfied, you can either clip these off with some wire cutters or you can grasp them one by one and just give them a helicopter off. I like doing the helicoptering. It kind of gives you a bit of a cleaner break. Uh, you can get, um, you don't have like a little tag end, whereas if you clip it, you'll have a little tag. We're gonna grab some diamond dub. We're using a dark peacock color here. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm just going to put the dubbing on the thread and I like to put that on there fairly tightly, fairly thin but a uh, tight noodle. And just before I wrap that, I'll just add a little bit of head cement or Sally Hansen's just on those thread wraps. And this will just give the fly a little bit more durability because I don't want to add head cement after I've wrapped it. That kind of uh, binds down some of the dubbing, but this way you get a nice secure uh, glued head on here without too much hassle. We'll add a double whip finish on this fly. We'll trim the thread off and this one's good to go. Can't wait to throw a bunch of these in the spring. Hey fly tires, thanks for stopping by and checking out my fly tying videos. If you enjoyed the video and want to show your support, hit the thumbs up and share it to your social networks. I hope you consider subscribing to the channel and if you do, be sure to hit the bell icon to get notifications on my latest fly patterns, tips, and reviews. If you have a question or comment, leave a message below. You'll also be entered into the next draw for some of the flies I tie and a few stickers. Until next time, this is Darren saying, keep a hook in your vice. Cheers.